Hello, my name is Griffin Shaliff, um, and my project goes into what it was like to live as a Neolithic human um, existing in a cold environment with a specific emphasis on the behavior of Otzi the Iceman. Some background information I think is important to discuss is that Otzi the Iceman is an extremely well-preserved Homo homo sapiens um, who lived around 5,300 years ago. A huge amount of research and focus has been um, centered on Otzi and um, what his bodily characters, characteristics were, what his lifestyle was like, um, as, well as, his, as well as his causes of death. Um, he's just super well preserved, and that's why people want to study him so much, is because there's so much you can, you can look at and um, deliberate on and such. So Otzi was discovered in 1991, in September, uh, by two German hikers. Uh, their names were Helmut and Erika Simon. His final resting place was at 10,530 feet on the east ridge of Finospice in the Alps, near the Austrian-Italian border. Uh, this image on the top left is the first photo that was taken when he was discovered, and then to the right is another picture taken a little bit later, um, which showcases the extremely well-preserved skin that is sort of sort of hugging the spine of Otzi right here. So pretty cool that you can you can see that. Anyways, moving on. Here's an actual map of the site. There it is right there with the star. That's where he was found. Here's Austria, here's Italy, and then here's the border. Right there. Here's an actual image of the mountain range. Um, I believe it's somewhere over here, Finospice. But yeah, there it is. So some artifacts that were found with him that were equally as well preserved as he was were a 13 centimeter, 13 centimeter flint dagger with an ashwood handle, a grass sheath, a copper axe, an unfinished yew longbow that was missing a string with a deer hide quiver, 12 arrow shafts and two finished arrows. So he was in the process of not only creating his longbow, but also some arrows as well. Uh, there were also discovered with him some antler tips, a retoucher that looks like a fat pencil that was used to shape blades, uh, two birch bark containers holding charcoal embers and maple leaves, which was used to um, have an easier time transferring like uh, embers that had not fully burned, but could still be used. Uh, remains of a wooden backpack and a dolomite marble stone disc with hide strips was also found. Uh, this is a hunting tool that's used to carry dead birds. Um, you tie the strings around their necks and you can hold them easier. Um, and then an antibiotic birch fungus was also discovered. So going into uh, Otzi's diet, he consumed a lot of high fat foods to combat the temperatures that he was living in. Um, high fat foods are bad for you in excess, but I guess it's it's worth it if you're living in cold. It helps you retain um, retain energy a lot better. So he consumed a lot of red deer, wild goat, um, whole grain einkort wheat, which is not high in fat, but he also consumed it. Um, this was found through pollen samples, which I thought was super fascinating. Um, they also found various mosses in his gut um, and on his clothes, which showed where he had traveled um, based on the region where the mosses were from. Some of those mosses that he consumed were the Nomadon viticulosus, the Hymenostilium recurvirostrum, the Necora complanata, as well as the Sphagnum imbricatum. Um, he also consumed a toxic fern that was used as a means of dealing with stomach pain. Um, it actually worsens abdominal pain. It can it can also cause cancer, like multiple forms of cancer as well. So very detrimental towards health, not helpful for abdominal pain at all. Um, Otzi also had a lot of tattoos on him. Um, these tattoos were proposed to be self-medicative, um, an, acupunctural, an acupunctural tactic in order to deal with issues concerning chronic pain. Um, to the right, you can see the locations of where the tattoos were on his body and to the left, you can see the actual pictures of the tattoos. They're mostly just lines and crosses. Um, but there's a lot of them, which is interesting because uh, oftentimes when you get a tattoo, you can get an infection really easily, especially if you're exposed to harsh conditions. Um, and he didn't have anything to deal with that. Like he, he didn't have um, alcohol or um, saran wrap to cover the tattoo, just lived with it and didn't get infected. So good for him. 
So there's been a lot of speculation surrounding how Otzi died, and um, there's also been some interesting proposals put towards his body moving after his death. So the original theory was that he died in a storm um, due from exposure to the cold, and then a new theory arose from studies done um, that analyzed him his broken bones through radiology. Um, this theory was called Spindler's Disaster Theory, um, and it was proposed that he had encountered some sort of conflict and tried to escape. Um, this shifted. This theory shifted as more evidence um, came to light, such as an arrowhead injury and head trauma, um, and then sort of developed into this theory that he was shot, bled out, and then frozen. And then later in 2010, um, a, hip a hypothesis was put forth that demonstrated evidence that his body had actually moved several meters from its original resting place due to its original resting place due to shifts in the ice. It was super fascinating. Here's a artistic depiction of the disaster theory. Um, I thought this was a really good picture because it showcases a lot of the artifacts he was found with. Here's the copper axe right here, the arrows, the backpack, uh, the sheath, the longbow unfinished, and also it's a good depiction of just the actual conflict itself. Here's the actual artifacts, like actual photos of them. Um, this is a copper axe that we saw on the, on the previous image, the stringless longbow with very intricate markings on them, very well made, um, a quiver, the flint dagger, the retoucher that looks like a big fat pencil. Um, this was used to shape tools. The bark container, which was carrying um, the fire, fire making supplies, um, the remnants of the wooden backpack, um, the tool, the dolomite marble tool, used to carry dead birds with the hide strings right here, um, and then the medicinal fungus as well. Some fun facts was that he actually had arterial disease, so his high diet of fats was probably doubly bad because of having a genetic issue that also concerned um, poor, poor artery health. Um, he also, the name of the toxic fern was bracken. Um, the scientific name was Pteridium aquilinum. Um, and like I said, it causes multiple forms of cancer, including throat, stomach, and urinary tract cancer um, because of a chemical that it has called taquiloside. So super unhealthy. Kind of crazy that he was eating it. Here's some photos, some more photos of his body when it was found. And also this one is later when people were researching it. Um, yeah, you can see his whole body. You can see how well preserved the skin is. How well preserved really everything is like this is a full intact body of a human that we can analyze and study which is very cool so lastly as i said before many times i'll see the iceman is an excellent excellent source for a crazy amount of knowledge concerning the copper age um, super cool that we can we have this 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 human that we can analyze so in depth and discover all this all this cool new information. Um, so many people still want to study it. The museum that that has ownership over the body um, gets a, tons of requests every year for people wanting to do more studies, uh, more research. Um, I have a lot of hope for future discoveries surrounding Otzi and more discoveries surrounding uh, archaeology and anthropology in this medium. Um, I heartily anticipate some future research. You know, maybe in the future, they'll be able to do um, brain scans that can showcase his thoughts or his memories or things that he thought was important, um, stuff that we can sort of look at on a more personal level and relate to um, emotionally. And that would be really cool. And so, yeah, I have a lot of hope for the future of of archaeology, um, specifically the future of research surrounding onto the S-Man. So thank you. Thank you for listening. And that'll be all. That is all. Thank you.